Whoa, that Volvo is fast, said absolutely no one ever. Until now, my name is Omar and this is the 2023 Volvo S60 Recharge Murdered Out Edition. It's not called Murdered Out Edition, it's called Black Edition, but it would be cool if they called it Murdered Out Edition. So yeah, when people think about Volvo, they think about safety, they think about John claude Van Damme doing a split between two trucks, or they think about Ikea in Sweden. It's very rare for Volvo to be the topic of discussion when someone is talking about performance, but once in a while Volvo does do performance, and they do it really well. We've had a few Polestar engineered Volvos here and there, but now Volvo is taking matters into their own hands. On the road to offering a full lineup of EVs, Volvo is making a pit stop with the lineup of plug-in hybrid recharge vehicles, and they all carry the same powertrain. You've got a 2.0-liter four-cylinder turbo engine making 312 horsepower, along with an electric motor that makes 143 horsepower. Now, working all together, the S60 Recharge, like all other recharge models, makes a total of 455 horsepower and 523 pound-feet of torque. That transfers power to the road through an 8-speed automatic transmission and you also have all-wheel drive. Now, all that means is that this thing should be pretty quick without any lag or anything. So let's just step on it. Whoa! This thing takes off! This will do 60 in an officially quoted time of 4.3 seconds. I've done it in 4.1 seconds. Now, you can only enjoy that insane amount of acceleration up to 112 miles an hour because Volvo thinks anything faster than that would be dangerous, you know, because safety first. Now, the top speed limitation might have something to do with the powertrain, and I get it, it kind of sucks. Honestly, I've seen a lot of people upset about the top speed, like they hit 112 miles an hour every single day on their daily drive. It's really not that serious, people. But yeah, to put this into perspective in comparison to the competition, the S60 Recharge here makes 73 more horsepower than the BMW M340i and 106 more than the Audi S4. Not to mention, in straight line acceleration, this stays neck and neck with the Germans. And even when it comes to handling, this is really, really good. It handles like it's on rails. Very, very impressive. Almost as good as a BMW. That is really good. Damn, I love this car. Now, previously, the T8 Volvos were a mashup of craziness. You had a turbocharged and supercharged four-cylinder along with a plug-in hybrid setup. It was basically a recipe for disaster. But now it's more cleaned up since all you have is the engine and the electric motor. You get a few drive modes to work with here, including hybrid, power, pure, and constant all-wheel drive. If you want to enjoy some EV driving, you can pop this into pure mode and just cruise along. Now, you're not accessing all the power this has to offer in pure mode because in this mode, you're running on the electric motor alone. And it's a pretty smooth drive, but it's also very slow. The acceleration really just disappears, kind of like Volvos of the past. Now, on a full charge, this thing will give you a total of 41 miles of range without using any freedom juice. Using everything that it has, you get a total of 530 miles of range. That said, the other cool thing in here is that you don't have to plug it in to recharge the battery. Hop into the battery settings and you can keep this on auto, hold, or charge. In hold mode, it'll hang onto the battery for later use, but if you put it into charge mode, this will actually charge the battery as you're just driving along. Which I find to be a very convenient setup because you can easily top this up to 30 miles of range if you're going out for a pretty long drive. Now in terms of comfort, this isn't terrible, but it's not that great either. For me personally, Volvos always need the optional air suspension to feel smooth and comfortable, otherwise they just feel stiff and they kind of rattle and they don't handle bumps and imperfections on the road that well. But yeah, the S60 can't be had with the air suspension and it doesn't have adaptive dampers. Nonetheless, as a luxury sedan in this segment, the ride is pretty much on par with the competition like the M340i and the S4. The S4 might be the more smoother option between these three, but in terms of performance, this thing is spectacular. It will definitely leave you surprised. I just hit 95 without even trying. It will definitely leave you feeling surprised and will put a smile on your face. 
And even though this is a two liter four cylinder under the hood, it doesn't feel like it. Volvo does an outstanding job of making their four cylinder turbos feel like a V6. Now going back to the overall handling and the sporty drive of this, it is very impressive, but I will say that it's not as sophisticated as what BMW does and I guess you would expect that. It's almost like a sleeper in that sense. No one expects a Volvo pulling up to a red light to be fast, but this one here, it's definitely quick. Now, the one I'm driving here is the S60 Recharge Ultimate Black Edition where everything is blacked out and murdered out. So yeah, this one isn't that much of a sleeper. This is probably one of the coolest looking Volvos on sale right now. I never thought I would see a murdered out Volvo in my life, but here we are. Now, going for the Black Edition doesn't give you any more performance. No matter which S60 Recharge you go for, you get all the power and performance that I just talked about. You get three trims to pick from, including Core, Plus, and Ultimate, and each one of those can be had with the Black Edition theme. And to keep it even more interesting, Volvo is only offering less than 450 units of the Black Edition, so yeah, I guess I'm pretty unique today. You can get the Black Edition in two colors, including Crystal White or the Onyx Black like the one that I'm driving here, but the Black Edition does more to make this look more stealth. You have a fully blacked out front end with a black grille and a giant blacked out Volvo badge. Swing over to the back and again, it's all blacked out. The Volvo lettering is all black and even the S60 badge is black. And then of course, each Black Edition model rides on 19 inch wheels that are blacked out and they make this look really dark. That said, I personally love Volvo's current design language. It's very modern, very minimalistic and very sleek. I think the current generation of Volvos will age exceptionally well. I personally think that this looks better than the BMW M340i and definitely more stylish than the Audi S4. That just kind of looks boring to me. So you guys need to stop sleeping on Volvo. I'm telling you, these guys are up to some amazing things. This isn't the same Volvo that your grandpa used to drive. They now do cooler things like black editions, which only cooler luxury brands like BMW, Mercedes-Benz, and Range Rover do. That said, let's talk about this interior. Now, just like the outside, the inside is also very modern and simple, but at the same time, very stylish and luxurious. Quality-wise, it is absolutely fantastic in here. The materials that Volvo uses for the dash, the trim, everything is really, really top-notch. There is very little plastic in here besides the polished black trim here on the center console, which they continue to be a fan of. It's just going to get scratched up easily, and you'll be pretty pissed about it in about two weeks of owning this. But yeah, this Black Edition gets these Sport R design seats that have a mixture of fabric and Napa leather. And if you go for the fully loaded Ultimate model like the one that I'm driving here, you get heated front seats along with a heated steering wheel for, you know, the heating game. You also get memory seats for the driver and the passenger, so that's pretty nice. And you get this awesome crystal shifter that lights up at night and it just looks really classy. I like the shifter a lot. I haven't seen that on newer Volvos in recent times. But yeah, overall, this cabin is a really nice place to be. Everything feels really nice to the touch, and I gotta say the steering also feels very nice to hold. Now let's talk about tech because Volvo does have a bad rep when it comes to their infotainment systems, even with the new Google-based infotainment that they have now. I've heard some bad things, but personally, I haven't had any issues with it, but that's just over a week of driving them around. There was only one time it took a minute to start up, but it was like negative eight degrees outside, so I gave it a pass, but otherwise, it's been good to me. I do have a friend that owns an S60 and he said he's had some issues over his ownership, so take that for what it's worth. Now since the new version of Volvo's infotainment system has Google built in, you get Google Maps as your navigation system, you also get Google Assistant, and of course you now get Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. There's no massive screen, you have a 9 inch touchscreen display here and everything in the system is laid out pretty nicely. Let's try this Google Assistant thing really quick. Hey Google, tell me a joke. Did you hear about the snowman that got upset when the sun came out? No, I didn't. He had a total meltdown. Oh, <laughs> nice. But yeah, other than that, you have this digital gauge cluster display, which has Google Maps in it. And that's really the only cool thing about it. It's not that customizable or anything like that. It's just pretty simple. There's nothing too crazy about it. Now, driver assist tech wise, you want to be shopping in the core trim because that's where you get Volvo's pilot assist system. The core trim will also add on adaptive cruise control and a bunch of other assists and alerts. But yeah, the pilot system will let this automatically steer itself and keep you in lanes. And it's a pretty solid system. I haven't had any issues with it over my week of testing it. The core trim is also where you get the 360 camera, which is a bit annoying because every time you activate the camera, 
you have to tap the screen and make it 360. It doesn't default to it right away. So it defaults to the rear camera. So you have to hit 360 and then you'll get the whole 360 view. Now the Ultimate S60 recharge that I'm driving here also gives you a heads up display and a Harman Kardon sound system. But if you feel like splurging and getting rid of $3,200, I definitely recommend upgrading to the Bowers & Wilkins sound system because it's absolutely fabulous. I will say that the one here doesn't sound as amazing as it does on the S90 or the XC90, but it is still one of the best systems in the luxury game by a long shot. I personally like to keep it in the concert hall mode setting and honestly, it's just amazing. Now, before I give you my final thoughts on the S60 Recharge Murdered Out Edition, let's take a look at the practicality side of things. You guys have no clue how cold it is outside today, but let's kick off the practicality side of things by checking out the legroom in the second row. Hop back here and you have a total of 35.2 inches of legroom. I'm about six foot tall. That is my seating position. As you can see, it's a good amount of room. The back seats are actually pretty comfortable in this thing. You don't have much going on back here, but you do have heated rear seats. So that's pretty nice on this Ultimate Black Edition model. You get heated rear seats with the Ultimate Black Edition, but yeah, overall, it's a pretty nice place to be. You could sit here for a pretty long ride. Let's check out the cargo capacity. I can't even talk anymore, it's so cold. You have a total of 11.6 cubic feet. I've got my filming equipment back there. Yeah, it's pretty standard for the segment, pretty cool. All right, before I give you my final thoughts on the S60 Recharge Black Edition, let me point out a few important daily ownership highlights that I'll have to show all of you. You have a total of four cup holders, two in the front right there, and then you've got two in the center armrest, which you bring out by doing that right there. Here are the keys, gotta love them Volvo keys. Door closed sound from the outside, and from the inside, solid. Charging game-wise, no wireless charger here on my test model, but you do have two USB-C ports right there. Those sitting in the back get two USB-C ports right there. Let's do a quick indicator and horn sound test. Indicator first. Love that Volvo indicator. So nice. Now for the horn sound. Oh yeah, that's solid. So should you consider buying the Volvo S60 Recharge? Definitely a big yes from my side. Now you don't have to go for the black edition if it gets too expensive for you. But that said, the S60 Recharge starts at $52,345 for the base core trim and goes all the way up to $69,145 for the Polestar Engineered. But no matter which one you go for, you get the power and performance of the T8 setup. Going for the Black Edition on any trim will cost you around $2,000 to look murdered out and really cool. Now that isn't any cheaper than the BMW M340i or the Audi S4, but at least you're gonna be a little different. Now, if you need more space and you're one of the many people out there that has to have an SUV, you can go for the XC60 Recharge. I actually reviewed the XC60 Polestar Engineered a few months ago, so check that one out if you want to look into the SUV. But yeah, before you go and buy another BMW or an Audi, definitely give the S60 Recharge a quick spin. Because honestly, you might just have a better overall experience here. Either way, thanks for watching. Make sure you hit like, make sure you hit subscribe. Make sure you follow me on Instagram and on TikTok. My handle there is at Omar Drives. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Take care. Peace. There are two things missing from this that I wish that it had. A nice exhaust sound, which this doesn't have because it's a plug-in hybrid and it doesn't have any paddle shifters, which would have been fun to have in a car. That performs really well. This acceleration is so addictive, but only up to 112 miles an hour, no faster than that.